Okay, hello everyone and welcome. I'm here with my friend Connie. My name's hello. Eloisa. Hi, Connie. And we are studying the text of A Course in Miracles. We are currently on chapter 16, The Forgiveness of Illusions. And we are starting section five, the choice for completion. Um, I think uh, we, I think we'll review just a little bit on the previous section, the illusion and the reality of love, so we can pick up from there. And I'll just read the, the first sentence of each line here. Let's see. Uh, Be not afraid to look upon the special hate relationship. For freedom lies in looking at it. It would be impossible not to know the meaning of love except for this, for the special love relationship in which the meaning of love is hidden is undertaken solely to offset the hate, but not to let it go. Okay. Uh, let's see the symbols, the paragraph two, the symbols of hate against the symbols of love play out a conflict that does not exist now notice that it uses the word symbols here okay that's uh that's important because it's not really that there's a conflict between love and hate it's that we're looking at a dream where there are symbols that play this out that play a conflict out it's like watching a movie a little bit like star wars Okay, and you have conflict between the dark and the light side. But they're images, they're just symbols. They're not, um, it, it's not, it's not reality. Um, okay, uh, paragraph three, the special love relationship is an attempt to limit the destructive effects of hate by finding a haven in the storm of guilt. It makes no attempt to rise above the storm into the sunlight. On the contrary, it emphasizes the guilt outside the haven by attempting to build barricades against it and keep within them. Um, let's see. Let's read the next line too. The special love relationship is not perceived as a value in itself, but a place of safety from which hatred is split off and kept apart. The special love partner is acceptable only as long as he serves this purpose. Okay. Uh, paragraph four, love is not an illusion. It is a fact. Paragraph five, there are no triumphs of love. Only hate is at all concerned with the quote unquote triumph of love. The illusion of love can triumph over the illusion of hate, but always at the price of making both illusions. Okay. Yes, because because now we're we're believing that there's a battle between them, um, and there is no opposite to love because that's what God is, and God has no opposite. It's eternal, um, and it encompasses everything. So there's nothing outside of it that could be in conflict or in competition with it, or that could attack it. Um, Okay, six, your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all of the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. Okay, and that's basically the whole, I'm just going to stop there. That's the whole idea of the course. Um, it's to really look at the blocks to the awareness of love's presence, uh, because it's the presence is there. The love is there. Um, so, okay. So the next section, um, the choice for completion. Okay, paragraph one. In looking at the special relationship, it is necessary first to realize that it involves a great amount of pain, anxiety, despair, 
guilt and attack all enter into it, broken into by periods in which they seem to be gone. All these must be understood for what they are. Whatever form they take, they are always an attack on the self to make the other guilty. I have spoken of this before, but there are some aspects of what is really being attempted that have not been touched upon. Okay. All right, so we're going to go more in depth into uh, the uh, looking at the special relationship. And this is this is uh, sort of the introduction here is just telling us that, you know, there is a lot of pain involved in special relationships and all of the anxiety, despair and guilt and attack um, that are found there. Um, let's see, are always an attack on the self, okay, to make the other guilty. So what it means is that um, we use our own suffering as a weapon <laughs> of attack to try to hurt the other that quote unquote loves us. Yeah, and I can remember being young, very little, and attempting to do that with my mother. I don't know why I was upset with her, but I must have been like five years old or something. And my way of trying to get back at her was to refuse to uh, go eat when she told me that, you know, dinner was ready. I just stood there outside of the kitchen and wouldn't go in. And so that was my way of trying to make her suffer by seeing that I wasn't eating because um, to my mom, feeding her children was like her primary, uh, what's the word, goal in life. You know, she was a very uh, simple, but, you know, very devoted mother. So um, I could tell even at that age that, that it worried her or upset her to see her children not eat, whether it was because they were sick or because, you know, they didn't have money to buy food or whatever it was. So, um, yeah. This is, this is what it's saying here, is that we attack ourselves to make the other guilty. Okay. Okay, number two. Very simply, the attempt to make guilty is always directed against God. For the ego would have you see him and him alone as guilty, leaving the sonship open to attack and unprotected from it. The special love relationship is the ego's chief weapon for keeping you from heaven. It does not appear to be a weapon, but if you consider how you value it and why, you will realize what it must be. Okay. Um, yes, so, so, so this is uh, taking us, uh, you know, a little deeper and it's saying, okay, well, my attempt to make, to, to see my mother suffering and therefore, you know, I would project, I was projecting guilt onto her for whatever. I don't even remember what the upset was about, but um, <clears throat> it's really directed against God. So even though I was trying to see my mother suffer, the attack was really obviously against myself because I was the one that was going hungry, <laughs> okay? And and um, and so in a self-attack, I am really uh, believing that what I am, okay, as God created me, <clears throat> can be attacked that I am something that is not eternal love, that I am something that is um, a body, obviously, that needs to eat and that without food, I am going to suffer and die. So, so what I'm really attacking is 
the eternal nature of what I am, which is what God is. So in in this uh so in this way, I'm really directing my attack against God because I'm attacking the eternal nature of what I am. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, yes. And so let's see. I'm not sure about line two. It says, for the ego would have you see him and him alone, capital H, capital H, as guilty. So the ego would have us see God as guilty guilty um and uh, let's see leaving the sonship open to attack and unprotected from it okay so yes yeah, so if we can attack ourselves as the sonship um then then we're unprotected okay because we've just attacked ourselves and we are the sonship and if that's the case then where's god why isn't God protecting me um, from myself? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's pretty, pretty insane, but that's, that's the ego's logic. So yeah, Connie, you're nodding your head. Anything you want to say? No. Okay. Um, yes. And it says it does not appear to be a weapon, but if you consider how you value it, you will realize what it must be. So really, we use the special relationship then as a way, to, as a defense um, against the truth, okay? Which is, you know, what sickness is. And that's why the first paragraph said that there's a great amount of pain there. Um, uh, be, because the mind is sick and it's going to suffer, so... Okay, uh, paragraph three. The special love relationship is the ego's most boasted gift and one which has the most appeal to those unwilling to relinquish guilt. The quote-unquote dynamics of the ego are the clearest here for counting on the attraction of this offering. The fantasies that center around it are often quite overt. Here, they are usually judged to be acceptable and e even natural. No one considers it bizarre to love and hate together. And even those who believe that hate is sin merely feel guilty, but do not correct it. This is the quote unquote natural condition of the separation and those who learn that it is not natural at all seem to be the unnatural ones. For this world is the opposite of heaven being made to be its opposite and everything here takes a direction exactly opposite of what is true. In heaven, where the meaning of love is known, love is the same as union. Here, where the illusion of love is accepted in love's place, love is perceived as separation and exclusion. Okay. Okay, so special love relationship is, is, uh, is one of separation and exclusion, even though, because it's, it's a body body or an ego ego or maybe even a body ego relationship okay which which are not real relationships they're they're fantasies um because because there is no ego i mean it's a made up construct of what we think we are and we're relating to a made up construct of the other person that we think uh that who we think they are okay which is not what they are because it's not our true self that we're relating with um so uh so let's see so what it's saying here is that in the in, in the special love relationship love hate relationship we can see the dynamics of the ego uh, and how the ego operates um because contradiction um see line four 
no one considers it bizarre to love and hate together. Okay, that's a contradiction. Okay, if you love, you're not, you can't hate. And if you hate, you can't love. But here, uh, you consider it normal for them to be together. So it's it's a contradiction. Um, and, so, and we accept that as, you know, we accept it as reality, which is uh, upside down, which is, um, you know, the opposite of heaven. That's why it calls it the opposite of heaven. Um, yes. So, and so the, the, and so hate is, um, is valued and is not corrected, you know, even if it's believed to be sin and people feel guilty, they really look at hate as almost like a type of power, um, in some way, you know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of, um, emotional energy, a lot of charge that goes with that. And, um, and there's a lot of, um, you know, if you think about, it, you know, really um, hating when you really hate someone, it becomes like a very concentrated, potent form of emotion that targets someone in particular. So it has a sensation or a feel of, of, of a strong energy to it that we um, misperceive to be power. And it's really just force uh, coming through as the body, the physical body uh, system. So let's see. Um, yes, and we don't even question it. We just think that that's natural, you know, uh, that uh, these emotions are natural. Um, and uh, okay, so love is the same as union, but here love is perceived as separation and exclusion. And, you know, anything that we consider special has to have something that it excludes because otherwise there would be no judgment of specialness. Do you see what I'm saying? So the scarcity um, aspect of specialness um is what makes special special relationships um, ex quote unquote exclusive um, because it's a you know it's a it's almost like uh, saying um, it's let's see it's almost um, it's almost like uh, it's almost like owning territory or owning a uh, property or, or, and keeping it all to myself, putting a little fence around it. And, you know, you are mine and I am yours and nobody can touch you. And, you know, and so then you get a lot of the jealousy and a lot of the envy and a lot of the, you know, the back and forth. The problem is, is that it doesn't just go externally to others it it's in the relationship too so that the partners themselves are jealous of one another do you see what i'm saying it's not just you know of other people but so yeah okay it's, number it's really just about every relationship we're in unless we're awake out they're all like that you know our BFFs, our spouses, our partners, our friends, where it's constantly that. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, you know, it says it's yes. quote unquote natural condition of the separation. Because we we just assume that's how we're conditioned. That's how we grow up. That's what we are surrounded with. That's what we see on TV and the media. Yes, you so, find someone special and you marry them and you can, you know, have your special life together and yeah, all that. It's mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. a trick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. So the line that says, uh, let's see, five, the thing, this is the natural condition of the separation. Those who learn that it is not natural at all seem to be the unnatural ones. I was kind of confused by that 
Yes, well, so. yeah. I mean, uh, when we practice the Course in Miracles and we really, uh, you know, practice the forgiveness and not buy into the guilt, uh, we begin to look unnatural to others. <laughs> well, and it feels unnatural. It's like, oh, is this, am I right? Is this okay to do this? Because just so ingrained with the other way. Yes, because it does feel unnatural. Well, because you're no longer conforming to yeah. your, you know, environment. Um, so yeah. you're so so it's as if you are no longer fitting in. Okay. But but that's just a temporary phase there because um be because once you once you realize, okay. Uh, it's not about the comparison. It's about the truth that we're all fundamentally the same. And we're just, uh, most of us are still confused. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, so then we can begin to look at everyone else as, uh, as holy and, you know, and the same as our mind we're one mind one holy son of god and mm -hmm. anything that is um behavior other than that is going to be overlooked because remember that's that's another definition for forgiveness is to overlook the error yeah and so mm -hmm. yeah and so we begin to relate to others not from the same place that we did before, but from a more, uh, from a place of, of peace, inner peace. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, number four. It is in the special relationship, born of the hidden wish for special love from God, that the ego's hatred triumphs. For the special relationship, <clears throat> is the renunciation of the love of God and the attempt to secure for the self the specialness that he denied. It is essential to the preservation of the ego that you believe the specialness is not hell, but heaven. For the ego would never have you see that separation could only be lost, being the one condition in which heaven could not be. yeah so it's just all the, the special relationship just trying to find a substitute for god well yes but remember it's a substitute for the special love that we asked from god okay and and god cannot give us special love because god is wholeness it's complete god is everything and cannot exclude you know one son of god from another son of god because that would be preferential treatment so that would be special love <laughs> so so it when we are asking of god for special love we're asking for inequality you know it's like a little bit of sibling rivalry right you want to be you want to have special favor from mom and and pop and uh, and and God doesn't work that way. Um, so so we turn against the love of God precisely because it is not going to give us specialness as different and better than my brother or my sister, you know, or someone else. Um, and I turn to the special relationship which is the attempt to secure for the self, the separated self, the specialness that he, God, denied. Okay, so so what I'm saying is, okay, well, God can't, 
God's not going to give me this. Okay, well, I'm not going to give up on this wish. Okay, I'm just going to turn from God and go make it myself. Yeah. Um, and, and, and in doing that, um, we make an ego. We make, make an ego identity. Uh, and, it, and the ego identity would have to uh, make a very strong case okay to keep itself um from um from being undone <laughs> okay uh so that it's going to make a special case that the special relationship is not hell even though it's full of pain and anxiety and stress but that is heaven and it does that by appealing to the idea of pleasure and lust and affection and um, let's see uh, the belief that that uh, I have needs that I cannot meet on my own so I'm dependent on someone else and um, and so there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, what's the word we're we're going to have to buy into a lot of beliefs about ourselves that are um limiting and um uh distorted um you know beliefs about being incomplete about being uh worthless about being lacking all of those beliefs are going to have to be um, accepted to hold on to the special relationship and yeah oh man it's making me reflect on uh growing up and how my one of my sisters was more special and how my mother even i had a conversation with her about that and she admitted that yes she she did feel that this one sister was someone she could, you know, really, yeah, loved more is what it seemed to me. And so I think, yeah, there was always, for me, always trying to prove myself or get that same love and wondering why I couldn't get that from her. But it was definitely played out for, yeah, the entire time we were all together yeah mm -hmm. special love yes and it's uh, very and... hurtful it's very hurtful when <laughs> yeah well it seems to be yeah it well, seems to be well that's what the special relationship is it's yeah, pain yeah. right there's a lot of pain yeah. and what we're doing is we are rehashing or reacting out it's almost like being trapped in a time warp mm -hmm. you know and re re <laughs> experiencing this uh rejection by god when we wish for specialness and so where initially does that feeling of being rejected rejected by god come from i mean i know that but it's just not coming to the forefront of my mind right now well if where you go yeah, so if you go back to your own situation, okay, and you go into that event that you just talked about, okay, when your mother's mm -hmm. telling you mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. and you just tune into how you're feeling in that moment, mm -hmm. you're probably going to find the answer to what you're asking. Yeah, yeah rejection because... and, yeah, yes. rejection. Yes, and the rejection would say somehow, that in comparison to my sister, I am less than, or I am not worthy enough, or um, right. yeah, because because there's uh, there's there's an acceptance that mm. your mother's judgment has made you unequal to your sister. Right. Right. Yeah. So there's there's this uh, 
belief that judgment, okay, whether it's from ourselves or from others, has power to change how God created us. Well, I, mean, I guess we give that power to our parents, absolutely, too. Well, yes, because we are perceiving yeah. them as a substitute for God. So they are God <laughs> yeah. in, in our own perception. Yeah. Uh -huh. you know? <clears throat> They're playing the part of God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah. And so the, the ego would have us... Uh, See, we, we bury all this because the mm. ego would have you see that separation could only, does not want us to see, would never have you see mm. that separation could only be loss. Yeah. Okay. Being the one condition in which heaven could not be. That's why in mm. a previous section, it said, do not seek for love in the world. You know, don't go out seeking for love in the world. Okay. <laughs> you got to look at the blocks <laughs> within your mind to the awareness of the presence of love. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Five. Uh, to everyone, heaven is completion. There can be no disagreement on this because both the ego and the Holy Spirit accept it. They are, however, in complete disagreement on what completion is and how it is accomplished. The Holy Spirit knows that completion lies first in union and then in the extension of union. To the ego, completion lies in triumph. And in the extension of the quote-unquote victory, even to the final triumph over God. In this, it sees the ultimate freedom of the self, for nothing would remain to interfere with the ego. This is its idea of heaven, and therefore union, which is a condition in which the ego cannot interfere, must be hell. Um, okay, so completion to the ego is basically triumph. It's basically dominance. It's basically, um, it's extension of victory. So it's bas basically competition and, hey, I'm the winner. <laughs> okay, uh, um, so uh, beca because what it's saying is now I'm special. So, you know, the example that you gave, completion would be, well, now I have replaced my sister and my mother sees me as the special one, you see? So that would be the competition, the triumph or the victory over your sister. That's the way the ego would look at it. And it would say, now I finally am worthy and whole and complete because my mother no longer judges me less than my sister, you see? Now I am... Uh, more than or you know uh special to her so uh it's a very different way of looking at completion um because um because it's uh let's see well it's incomplete <laughs> it's still incomplete exactly 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 um yes but to the ego it means that there is uh, nothing would remain to interfere. There, there would be no competitor to compete for specialness. That's what it considers ultimate freedom, freedom of the self, is to be the top dog, to be survival of the fittest, you know. Yeah. So there's all this striving for that in the world. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but Holy Spirit... Um, recognizes that completion lies first in union and then in the extension of union because wholeness um, is a recognition of no separation. Therefore, there's no competition. There's no, um, uh, well, yeah, there's no individual specialness, okay, because everyone is the same. And, uh, and in that, there is no lack that's why there is completion. Um, because when we stop comparing ourselves, 
we stop seeing ourselves as less than or more than, and we can be just be everything. <laughs> and, and recognizing that we can share that uh, because we know we have it and we yes. stop believing that we lack something or that we're missing something. So, okay. Number six. The special relationship is a strange and unnatural ego device for joining hell and heaven and making them indistinguishable. And the attempt to find the imagined quote unquote best of both worlds has merely led to fantasies of both and to the inability to perceive either as it is. The special relationship is the triumph of this confusion it is a kind of union from which union is excluded and the basis for the attempt at union rests on exclusion. What better example could there be of the ego's maxim, seek, but do not find? Yeah, so joining hell and heaven. So a lot of times we, uh, we've we learned or taught ourselves that reconciling the opposites is possible, that that's what's going to bring peace, okay? And so it's the idea of joining hell and heaven, uh, which are opposites. But because we believe in opposites, they can never be reconciled because they're opposites. They're not the same. So uh, <laughs> you hold on to the belief in opposites and then you try to reconcile them. Um, uh, then uh, let's see, you're going to, yes. Yeah, so you're going to, that's, that's just the way that we try to deal with conflict without really solving the conflict. You know, we say, okay, well, you know, I have two op opposite uh, choices, which, how do I decide? Well, let me look at the, you know, good qualities on this side. What's the best about this side? And what's the best about this side? And let's see. Um, and, um, and, but I really can't decide. So I'm just going to try to hold on to both and try to, um, you know, ha take the best from each side. Um, and and somehow try to <laughs> make that work um okay but it, but this is saying okay that's just a fantasy because if they're opposites they're opposites you have to change the belief in opposites if you really want to have union um and so um yeah and it and it's a detriment to to perceiving either as it really is. Um, because in in the world we perceive, uh, it's a world of duality and duality is the belief in opposites. It's a, it's a belief that God, love, eternal love has an opposite. And until we see that that's not true um, and that heaven and hell cannot be reconciled, we're always going to try to be juggling these two um and let's see and and yeah it's confusing so special relationship is a triumph of this confusion it's a kind of union from which union is excluded so it's a way of saying oh i can be in this relationship and have union body to body but still be separate you know, I can feel like I'm one with this other person, maybe, uh, in, you know, in a sexual, sexual way, but I can hate her guts for doing this, uh, you know, um, something else here. So it's a way to try to uh, have it both ways, separation and no separation. Um and so, um, and so we, we don't actually seek, we don't, it's seeking and not finding. So we're looking, you know, we reject eternal love and then we try to find it 
okay? Because we're incomplete without it. So, but we're not seeking it where it is. We're seeking it in what we made to be a replacement for it. So that's why it's seek, but do not find. So, okay, seven. Most curious of all is the concept of the self, which the ego fosters in the special relationship. The quote unquote self seeks the relationship to make itself complete. Yet, when it finds a special relationship in which it thinks it can accomplish this, it gives itself away and tries to quote unquote, trade itself for the self of another. And this is not union, for there is no increase and no extension. Each partner tries to sacrifice a self he does not want for the one he thinks he would prefer. And he feels guilty for the quote unquote sin of taking and of giving nothing of value in return. How much value can be placed upon a self that he would give away to get a quote unquote, a better one. Okay. Okay. So, you know, this is talking about how we, in a special relationship, we, we kind of say we, we want to barter, like maybe, uh, so like maybe I think I don't have, you know, certain skills and I see that my partner has them and, but I have other skills, but I don't value those skills. So I'll say, okay, well, look, you know, I'll do this for you if you do this for me. But what I'm really giving is what I see as having no value. So, so, so maybe I can cook really well, but I don't give it value because it doesn't earn money in the world. Okay. Or maybe I, you know, do your laundry uh, or clean or do the cleaning, but I see it as being a servant and not, um, not valuable. Or uh, let's see, or, or it could be, it could be when I, where it uses the word trade here, tries to trade itself for the self of another, or maybe I think that I am really bad looking and that you're really good looking. Okay. And so I can identify with your looks and then feel like I have gained something and that I have, um, uh, you know, gotten rid of what I don't like about myself. Do you see what I'm saying? So, <laughs> um, so what we do is we do this little game of, uh, of identification. Maybe I think you're really smart and, you know, I'm pretty dumb. So I'm going to marry you because I'm going to, um, you know, uh, let you take care of all of the things that I think I can't handle because, you know, the world's too complicated or whatever. And I've already decided I'm not smart anyway. So, I mean, we just do all this kind of silly stuff. Um, um, because we're so insecure, <laughs> you know, when we come into a relationship, we don't come into a relationship uh, really uh, from a place of wholeness and completion and wanting to just share that, you know, joy and love and happiness with someone else. We come from a place of need. Um, so, and hunger and, you know, wanting things and wanting more than what we have and all of that. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see the line seven, how much value can be placed upon a self that he would give away to get a quote unquote better one? Hey, I'm getting a good deal here, you know. <laughs> Paragraph eight. <laughs> the quote unquote better self the ego seeks is always one that is more special and whoever seems to possess a special self is quote unquote loved for what can be taken from him where both partners see the special self in each other the ego sees a quote a union made in heaven end of quote for neither one will recognize that he has asked for hell 
And so he will not interfere with the ego's illusion of heaven, which it offered him to interfere with heaven. Yet if all illusions are of fear and they can be of nothing else, the illusion of heaven is nothing more than an quote unquote attractive form of fear in which the guilt is very deep and rises in the form of quote unquote love. Hmm. I see. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, wow. How complicated we make it so, so complex. <laughs> yes, because now we, we've made a fear, see, attra an attractive form of fear. And that's really interesting mm. because that mm. plays out in so many ways mm. uh, in uh, social interactions and in society. I mean, when you think about, you know, like an amusement park and you think about scary rides, you know, or watching scary movies. I, I hadn't really paid attention to the, um, to this illusion. Okay. That heaven is nothing more than a quote unquote, untra an attractive form of fear. Um, so excitement, you know, you could say is an attractive form of fear. And, and a lot of times, there's a part of us that's that is sort of impulsive and is a risk taker, and I can see here that it it is this uh, this idea, okay, that heaven is nothing more than an attractive form of fear, so that we are we actually go towards and are attracted to what is fearful to us. Um, I can think of, you know, like uh, maybe trying drugs or trying, um, you know, hanging out with, quote unquote, the bullies in school or, um, you know, uh, because um, things that we are afraid of, we gravitate towards. And so um, let's see. Yeah, it's the idea of more special um, that is attractive. It's the idea that, you know, like with the example with your sister, oh, she is more special than my mother. So I need to be like her, right, to be more special. I need to be better. See, my better self would be like her, something like that. Um, it beca and whoever seems to possess a special self is loved for what can be taken from him. So in the special relationship, whatever we consider special characteristics of our partner, um, then we're going to want to take those from them. Okay, because we're going to believe that we need them. Because we're going to believe we don't have them or we, or that we're not as special as them. Um, and, you know, and sometimes, yeah, both partners make this sort of uh, quote unquote union made in heaven because they kind of balance the, the uh, they make it seem to work where, okay, well, you know, he's really special and um, he's a hard worker and, you know, I'm really special and, you know, I get to you know, take care of the kids or whatever it is that I do, you know, stay at home and do the the chores around the house or whatever, or manage, I get to manage the business and he gets to run it or whatever it is that we perceive uh, in each other as, you know, strengths more special than ours. Yeah. Um, there, Those are going to be attractive to us because uh, we want to take them to complete ourselves. Yeah. And there's going to be guilt there because we know we're taking them. <laughs> but at the same time, we think that we're also sacrificing to get them. So, you know, we think it, we, we just think, oh, well, it evens out. 
And it's only when we think, oh, no, it's not fair. You know, I'm giving more than you are. Then we, we begin to complain in the relationship. Right. Or you're asking for too much. Then it's like, no, forget it. Yeah, that kind of thing. Okay, number nine. Is it your turn, Connie? No, you're odd. Okay. <laughs> the appeal of hell lies only in the terrible attraction of guilt, sure. which the ego holds out to those who place their faith in littleness. Um, okay, so this is referring to the previous paragraph where I was talking about a quote-unquote attractive form of fear in which the guilt is buried. Um, okay, so the appeal of hell lies only in the terrible attraction of guilt, which the ego holds out to those who place their faith in littleness. The conviction of littleness lies in every special relationship, for only the deprived could value specialness. The demand for specialness and the perception of the giving of specialness as an act of love would make love hateful. The real purpose of the special relationship in strict accordance with the ego's goals is to destroy reality, reality and substitute illusion. For the ego is itself an illusion and only illusions can be the witnesses to its quote unquote reality. Yeah, somewhere else it says that illusions make illusions. Um, so yes, so the appeal of hell lies only in the terrible attraction of guilt. So the special relationship is really held because remember in the first paragraph, there's pain, there's anxiety, there's attack, there's all of that. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of conflict. And so um, the appeal is this attraction to guilt, which the ego holds out to those who place their faith in littleness. So to place our faith in littleness is to regard ourselves uh, really... Um, you know, in a lot of negative, but but even even positive ones can be littleness. You know, oh, I'm so, um, you know, I'm so dumb, or I'm so, um, I'm so sinful, or I'm, you know, um, I'm, I'm such such. Um, let's see. I make I make uh, all these mistakes. I'm, you know, I just. I mean, there's a lot of uh, beliefs that we have about ourselves that would, would see ourselves as um, worthless or valueless or undeserving of good things. Um, and that's the conviction of littleness. Um, yeah, for only the deprived could value specialness. So, yes, so we... Um, we feel deprived and we deprive ourselves of good things to be right about ourselves because when we make ourselves little, being right becomes very important. You know, it's a form of feeling confident <laughs> when we're wrong. <laughs> so uh, uh, we don't we, we don't take correction very uh, very easily. You know, it's, it makes it hard to learn. Um, so, cause the, 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 the mind is to be open to really learn and, um, not be threatened by new ideas. So, um, yeah, could, yeah. So only the deprived could value specialness. So the deprived would demand specialness because it believes it lacks it. Um, Yeah. Uh, but the perception of the giving of specialness as an act of love would make love hateful. Okay, because there would be exclusion. So, you know, in a, in a family, the giving of specialness to one 
would make the other children hate that one. Um, so it would contaminate the, really, the whole union. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, the real purpose of the special relationship is to destroy reality. And the, what is reality? Well, reality is love. Okay. And that's the whole purpose of, of a specialness. And in the special relationship is to substitute something else, an illusion, for the love of God. Um, yeah. Okay, so, Ted. If you perceived the special relationship as a triumph over God, would you want it? Let us not think of its fearful nature nor of the guilt it must entail, nor of the sadness and the loneliness. For these are only attributes of the whole religion of separation and of the total context in which it is thought to occur. The central theme in its litany to sacrifice is that God must die so you can live. And it is this theme that is acted out in the special relationship. Through the death of yourself, you think you can attack another self and snatch it from the other to replace the self that you despise. And you despise it because you do not think it offers the specialness that you demand. And hating it, you have made it little and unworthy because you are afraid of it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so so by pursuing the special relationship, we we are automatically believing that we can triumph over God because we're believing that God could not give it to us and rather than accept the truth, okay, of perfect equality and wholeness for everyone, um we're looking for it in the special relationship. Okay, so so the pursuit of that of specialness um, is separation. So that's that that's what the course says that the wish for specialness is the was the split or the separation. That's how well that was the first split. So let us not think of its fearful nature nor of the guilt it must entail. Uh, nor the sadness and the loneliness, for these are only attributes of the whole religion of separation. Yes, so so there are the side effects, okay, the fear, the guilt, sadness, loneliness, all those are the symptoms or the effects of believing that we have accomplished the separation and the religion of it, you know, because it's a, uh, it, there's a worshiping element of it, you see, because not only do we not really question it or um, uh, we support it <laughs> by seeking a special relationship, we are um, we are supporting that idea and we are, um, let's see. Uh, we are, let's see, fitting into the world that supports that idea. So it becomes a collective, almost a collective religion <laughs> of separation. Um, yes. And so the central theme, litany to sacrifice, is that God must die so you can live. And Honestly, I mean, that's a very central idea in the teachings that I grew up with in the Catholic Church, uh, because we, you know, the, the doctrine is, is that God died so that we could have eternal life. So there's the element of a special relationship there. You see, of sacrifice, that love entails sacrifice. Um yeah, and so it is this theme that is acted out in the special relationship um, because we sacrifice, quote unquote, ourself. So through the death of yourself, you think you can attack another self and snatch it 
from the other to replace a self that you despise. <clears throat> um, so let's see. So through the sacrifice of myself, so if I you take the example of what I did when I was a, a, a child uh, with my mother, I was sacrificing myself in terms of not eating a meal, okay? Um, so you could say that I was the death of myself. I was killing myself. I was, you know, um, okay, so that I could attack another self. So I was attacking my mother. Okay. And I was snatching her self then to replace a self that I despised because I saw her as the one with control and power. So by doing this, I flipped the tables and I made myself the controller and um, the, um, the one in power, you see, in my mind. So that's how I would snatch, snatch the other self and replace it with the self that I despised. Um, yeah, and and you despise it because you do not think it offers the specialness that you demand. Uh, and hating it, you have made it little and unworthy. So, because you're afraid of it. So, you know, the, we, we often think that um, that littleness means uh, physical littleness, but it's littleness in how we see ourselves. So it's not uh, just being a baby or a small child, a small body. It's that we um, we belittle ourselves. You know, we really degrade ourselves. So, okay, 11. You know, I'm wondering if we could there's quite a few more paragraphs in this section. If we could finish it next time, this there's a lot here, actually. Yes. This is a really intense section for me. And okay. I'm like, oh, man. Yes. yes. You, shall we stop here, Connie, or do you want um, to read one more? Um, and, uh, we, whatever. We can, we can do one more. Is that okay? Yeah, let's just do yeah. one more. Okay. okay. All right. I'm just feeling a little um, overwhelmed by all the crap and craziness I do in my relationships <laughs> and I'm just like man I can't okay. get a headache <laughs> I want to stop uh, well you want to get out of this this you nonsense just, you just you you're looking at it okay and then you <sighs> give that to the Holy Spirit you just give it to the Holy Spirit okay um yeah, so let, let's just stop here then. Let's just stop here. Okay, that way you can just breathe. Like, oh my goodness, all <laughs> the stuff, the shenanigans that go on. Yes, okay. but, but as you're looking at it, okay, uh, see if you can <laughs> observe it without labeling it or judging it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, because uh, because it'll be hard to let go of it. It'll be um, you're going to mm. hold on to it once you label it or judge it. Mm. You're not going to be able to overlook it, which is the mm. forgiveness piece. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you want to be able to say, OK, I see all of that. But you know what? That's not what I am. Yeah. OK, that's 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 the. um <clears throat> That is the unconscious, misdirected self that is accepting, um, you know, this uh, these ego thoughts from the ego without having questioned them. But now you're in a place where you are open to questioning them. So you're not going to just follow them blindly. Do you see that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're in a you're in a better place now because because you're you're not just unconsciously following through on them. You're able to see. Well, wait a minute, and that's going to give you space and a little bit of time to pause, mm -hmm. so that you mm -hmm. can look at it differently. Yeah, yeah. It's that judging it, and then that keeps 
keeps it stuck. It does yeah. because you're you're holding it in your attention by judging it. Yeah. 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 Boy. Oh. Yeah. So that, that's why this is really, really helpful because it's shining a light into that unconscious where we have hidden a lot of this stuff. Um, and so it's bringing it up now so that uh, it can be dispelled by the light. Well, this is this is huge. I mean, because it's all about relationships with the, the course. And yeah, this is just a huge piece to unwind it and is. look at. And how yes. it gets played out is just mind blowing. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It's cruel <laughs> for everyone concerned <laughs> when you're. Uh, well, yes, that's. Yeah, that's yeah. why. Yeah. That's why it's a. Uh, it's um, considered uh, a sickness. That's why we're looking yeah. for healing the healing the mind and it's really healing the mind of the ego thought system yeah. that that is it's all confusion yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. did you turn off the recording or did you ever even start the recording hmm. oh that's a good question connie i just noticed now there's no little light huh um i do remember starting hmm. it yeah yeah, well, yeah you okay. did so huh, oh wonder... okay i haven't stopped it yet though oh okay because we haven't said goodbye all right okay yeah well, i don't I'll... see the little light okay okay all right well thank you and until next time we'll I... pick up at paragraph 11 okay thank paragraph you Paragraph 11 yes all right good let's stop